Donald Trump, Joe Biden, who isn't in the race to be president anymore because he dropped out, um, Kamala Harris, possibly Michelle Obama, Gavin Newsom, eh, I don't think so. You know what we need to talk about? We need to talk about this, the prophetic and politics, because this stuff is all over the place. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. What's up, guys? That's Supernatural Talk Podcast, episode 35. That is what we have going on today. Guys, you've been here for 35 episodes. Give yourself a hand clap. Hallelujah. Honestly, I'm happy that you guys tune in every week to hear what God has put on our hearts. Before I jump into this wonderful topic today concerning the prophetic and politics, I want to introduce you to my co-host. I got glory boy number one behind the computer, Isaiah Poche Cotorial, the evangelist himself. And I'm proud to be an American. Latin American, but an American, none the least, none of God. Hey man, you left a lot of headroom there today, buddy. <laughs> I'm trying to adjust this like five times. Like I guess I like when I'm sitting down. It's all right. People, <laughs> people love you no matter what. I thought that was a mark. This I got Glory Boy number two and a half. Keys Ice. Oh, two and a half. <laughs> two and a half. What's up? I am here. <laughs> Holy Spirit and Fire. Shout out. Oh wait, it's right here. Holy Spirit and Fire Supernatural Shop. Get it today. Amen. Man, he's he's telling the truth now. And I got, I got glory boy. Number two, Mark Jean. I'm proud to be in Haitian American. Where at least he knows he's free. I'm free. Amen. And you know, really though, we're free because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All Amen. right. You know, Mark may go back and change the barbecue of Haiti. Haiti. Amen. Prophesy. Maybe people will get saved out there. Yes. I mean, who, kn who knows, man? You know what? There, there will be a massive revival there. Prophecy. Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about that later. I'm prophesying to him for his people who need the glory of God to show up in a big way. Haiti does not belong to the witches and warlocks. Haiti belongs to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Haiti shall be saved. All right. So let's talk about mm -hmm. um, the prophetic in politics. If you look at YouTube... You'll see this prophet, that prophet, the other prophet, the prophet to the right, the prophet to the left, prophesying all these different things. Some people are saying the same thing. Some people are saying other things. When it comes to candidates, you know, some prophets we can tell are prophesying from their opinion and from their flesh and not necessarily from what the Spirit of the Lord is saying because things are all over the place with them. And that's why when it comes to the prophetic, we don't want to mix in our carnal ways because if we are emotional people in the wrong way, we will mix our emotional tendencies into our prophetic unctions. And we don't want to do that, right? But we have a lot going on in the political climate right now. I mean, it's all over the internet. We're getting closer and closer to the election in November, where I personally believe that we'll see Donald Trump be president. Uh, I'm just going because I, I remember Kim Clement said two two terms, and other prophets that alike have said the same thing. It's not going to be an easy road to get there. I just know at the time of this recording, the Democratic Party is all over the place now because, as you know, Joe Biden has stepped down. Some people even say that he's not around anymore, but obviously he is. I saw a video of him stepping off the plane, so he's still here at the time of this recording. But we also know that now Kamala Harris is supposed to come forward. And some people are even saying... And this isn't too far-fetched that even Michelle Obama could step in. But I think when it comes to the prophetic and politics, we have to really make sure we hear the Spirit of the Lord on things. And we need to be able to differentiate when it is us, the human spirit, speaking, and when it is us allowing the Holy Spirit to speak. Because we as people have our feelings towards things, but God has what he feels towards things. And we want to obviously line up to God's ways. So we want to make sure that we can understand when we are saying something because it brings so much confusion into the camp because people can't tell when they're feeling some type of way. 
But I got the guys over here. I'll speak to Keegan first. Now, this is an interesting topic to talk about. Mm -hmm. I know that you have been following the uh, election stuff for a while and Mm -hmm. following the presidential stuff and all that. When you look on social media and you see what some of the prophetic people have been saying throughout the years, and it's funny because they always come out big time right around now. Mm -hmm. I mean, even last time they were screaming from the rooftops. Now we got a whole new breed. Is different than the ones that were there before. Those are still there, but like, there's a whole new breed of prophetic people that's come forth with words. Um, what do you think when you see, you know, everybody saying a bunch of stuff? I think that we're seeing a lot of, and you kind of mentioned this earlier. I think that we're seeing a lot of people um, that just want their voice to be heard. They want to be seen. They want to, you know, they want to say, "Oh, you know, I said this, and now it's come to pass. It's come. It's come true." And um, I do think that there that we do have real, you know, prophets who are giving national prophecies. Um, but you have to be really, really careful who you're listening to and what you're intaking. Because I remember this time last year, right? All the prophets were saying Trump's, you know, gonna he's taking a second term, right? Trump's gonna be in office, all this stuff. And then it didn't end up happening. And then what happened? They just fell off the bandwagon for, you know three years and then now here they are again and they're like oh well I meant you know it's it's two terms but it wasn't together it wasn't back to back you know so um I really think that we just have to be careful who we're listening to I think there's a lot of doom and gloom prophets as well I think a lot of people are just like they're like oh we're gonna see this and this and this and I think that it's important for us as leaders in the body of Christ to bring hope to people right we need to bring hope we need to to um, really allow the glory of God to manifest during this presidential election. Because at the end of the day, the church is the one, right? It says that the church shall be upon his shoulders, Jesus's shoulders, and we have Christ in us. So I think that it's our job to be, to be interceding, to be praying for, for, for everyone, for both political parties. And we need to allow justice and righteousness to enter the White House. And so that's something that I'm praying for this time because the last election, I was not Holy Spirit filled. Mm-hmm. And I was so fixated on the prophecies and I was so fixated, you know, on, on Trump becoming president again. And then when that didn't happen, I, I, I lost hope. I was like, where, what, what, what happened, God? And so I really think that we have to be really careful, um, when giving prophetic words over presidents and leaders. And I think that it's what we can do as the body of Christ. And our most important job is to be interceding and praying and fighting for this nation, because I'm telling you what happens in the U S you know, depicts the rest of the world. So, um, I just pray that, you know, Jesus is the one, you know, who's in the white house and, uh, and that he, you know, is able to reign and we're able to see, you know, Christ come back, um, and to the schools and government and everything. Yeah. Jesus will come back into the white house if a candidate will allow him to. Amen. So we prophesy in part, we see in part. So when all that stuff was going on, I think the prophets and the prophetic people needed to understand that they were seen in part. It doesn't mean that they got it wrong. I always refer back to when Agabus was talking to Paul and how thing would happen. It didn't happen exactly that same way. You know, so they have to give themselves just a little bit of of wiggle room. But there's a lot of stuff out there. And I think that as we watch things unfold, just be in prayer that God's will will come to pass. That's pretty much it. The candidate he wants will be in. Um that will, will at what will ultimately cause revival to break out. That's what we want, right? That's what we want. I want the candidate. Daniel wants the candidate that stands with morality, that stands with Christian values. That's what I want. Like, I think no Christians were expecting this last guy to get in. Regardless of what you think, God allowed that to happen. Regardless if you think it was done wrong or right, you know, he got in. And I think it was showing us as a nation how weak we had become because our leader represents who we are and we had become weak. And the reason we had become weak is because I even believe before him, we had put Trump on a place that he shouldn't have been. And we had forgot that really Jesus is the one that needs to be ruling and reigning. So we, we ended up getting ourselves fixed. And 
hopefully God's given us grace and mercy and he's going to allow something um, to happen that we, we need desperately as this nation. And, you know, I believe if we don't see him come back in, we're going to be in for a wild ride as a church and as a, as a nation. And these leaders, as Donald Trump has even said, like Xi Jinping and uh, Putin and all these people, these people are thirsty and hungry for power. And when they say, see weakness, they take advantage of that because that's what an alpha does. An alpha sees weakness, they take advantage of the weakness, and they push their power, they push their authority, they start to take territory to empower themselves. Because in this world, I mean, these governments, these nations want to be number one. They want to be the world power. They want to be the ruling, the ruling one, right? That's just, that's just the nature of politics and the nature of how nations go. If you, you know, Rome, Rome was the world superpower. Every nation was coming into Rome. Rome was like America is today. They say America is a, is a modern day Rome in a sense, you know? We see what happened with Rome. Rome fell because of just just how messy it got and the things it allowed and all the stuff that was going on. And and we see that with America today. The thing is, is I believe like Jonah, he told Nineveh to repent and Nineveh repented. I believe it's the same way. People with the spirit of Jonah need to rise up and scream Amen. repent. And we don't need to go run and get in the whale's belly. But you know what I'm saying? We need to say repent, turn, back, turn your hearts back to Jesus so God can visit this land and heal it. All right. And I do want to caution you all. Don't listen to the doom and gloom people, people that are always prophesying the worst. People are so attracted to that. And you'll notice these people gain big followings because they're always prophesying doom and gloom. And so much of the stuff doesn't come to pass. I can look back in YouTube all the way back to 2008 and see these conspiracy folks. They were just putting all this stuff out all the time. These people have fell off. I mean, numbers of people, scores of people that I used to watch a long time ago fell off. I would almost get wrapped up in these conspiracy videos that were on there. And, and it was just like, they're gone. And they didn't, they didn't really go anywhere. So there's people like that now. Listen, hear me now. Hear me prophetically. A lot of these people you're listening to now, 10 years from now, they're going to fall off. They're going to be nowhere to be seen. And there's going to be few that left. We're in eras. Uh, we're in eras of Christianity. Me, I'm pushing through to the end. I plan on being on as many eras as I can possibly be in. But these, some of these people you see, they won't be around. They'll, they'll fall off. I mean, just the nature of how things work. So pray and pick and choose the voices that you listen to. And make sure that they're true prophetic voices that, that, that have a backlog of of things that have come to pass they really hear from the spirit of the lord you know and don't beat them up if they have a, a moment so don't turn them into elijah's where they run into the cave but is there a place for the prophetic in politics what do you think isaiah um i think we take it back to the bible how uh, jesus is a king and a priest at the same time uh which is the clash of like religion and politics at the same time um and that we're called to be a, a holy priesthood uh, also princes and uh, princesses. Um, this nation was established under God. And I think when the nation begins to to slowly walk away from that, we begin to see what we we saw with, you know, the Roe V, you know, and the, the 19 stuff. And um, n knowing that, I think when a, a leader is like God this and like the Lord this, Jesus, and he's pushing the principles of the Bible, the principles of the kingdom of heaven, I think we should, as a nation in general, whether you're a Christian or not, should say, hold on, like there's a there's someone pushing light, like someone pushing truth, righteousness. I think we should look and pay attention. Um, and, and I think it, it should be involved. You know, it's like in your own home, like what does Joshua say? Me and the, my house will serve the Lord. Like in your own home, like God is at the head. And you could just say the U.S. is just one big home, you know, they like Donald Trump said, this is our, our home. This is our family. So I, I believe 100% that they definitely should mix. A lot of people think contrary that they shouldn't mix, that they should be separate. So we had the separate of church and state. But I think that was one of the biggest mistakes that, you know, the U.S. made back in the day. And um, a prayer of mine is like that we get, you know, got back into the schools and back into the curriculums and back into TV and back into music more than it's ever been. And that we don't keep going in the opposite direction. Um, because we're sin abound, grace does abound much more. But that's my take on that, man of God. Right, right. What do you think, uh, 
Mark? Yes. Is yes. there a place for the prophetic in politics? Oh, for sure. Um, Do you think a prophet should be hanging around in the White House? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> I mean, it's like Isaiah said, it's, it's biblical. I mean, you even see even throughout the Bible where, you know, when a nation is beginning to turn wicked or corrupted, God raised a voice. He raised a, a man or a prophet to bring what direction back to the nation, back to, you know, the, the people, back into righteousness, holiness. So I believe um, a prophetic voice is needed. The pro uh, prophecy is needed to bring uh, a nation back to to the will of God, um, you know, to begin. And, you know, it's kind of even to like piggyback also that question you said earlier about, you know, um, just, you know, what's happening right now with everyone prophesying you know, the same thing or, you know, you know, it's it's, it's something that kind of like, you know, kind of hit me just now as you were speaking. Um, there's a thing called conditional prophecy mm -hmm. and there's unconditional prophecy. And one of the things that I'm seeing, people are using conditional prophecy as this is it. It's final. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they're they're just recycling things. They're, they're not uncertain they're not sure that you know this is God speaking they're just doing it to say stuff but you know God can change his mind I mean we've seen it with Moses and Aaron where you know they interceded on the behalf of Israel and God changed his mind so even right now I, I believe it, it may look crazy right now but we should you know adhere to the prophetic voice but also have a positive mindset that we do serve a God of hope a God that can bring change to the nation and to the heart of man. So we, we do need a prophetic voice in this time for sure. Amen. And, you know, I was talking a little bit about emotions and I can dialogue with you, Mark. Mark, you're from, well, you're from Miami to Atlanta, right? Yes. Your family yes. come from Haiti to Miami Haiti. and then went to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I notice sometimes is people will bring past hurts, traumas, emotionalism into the realm of prophecy and politics. Mm. Um, now, listen, obviously I'm a white guy. Who knows? I might have black in me somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> That's what people would try to say. But anyway, <laughs> I haven't you done got, the DNA yet. Don't let, me find, don't let me find out for real. You though, got you know someone there somewhere. Yeah, maybe somewhere. You don't know. But anyway, what I notice is people will really sometimes use history and implement the emotion of history into prophecy and politics and because of a lot of the wounds and trauma that listen is ever i mean it's there and it, there is some relevancy there but i think when it comes to god we need to get at get that out of the way really want his heart towards something and i'm saying this because of this i know that there's people of different ethnicities that will refuse to to go with a candidate because they've been brainwashed to believe things. And you now are seeing people come out the other side, mostly uh, on the on the black yeah. side. We watch videos of it come out and say, hey, we didn't get told the truth. Like they lied to us. Yeah. I even think you said that you're seeing people close to you even turn and, and switch the other way. Is that true? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Because uh, they didn't get what they yeah. voted for. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely tied to their emotions and and um, you know self worth. A, a lot of it points to self yeah. in, in a lot of areas, and I believe people are moved by that. Which, and it's a lot of lies that the politicians can feed. Yeah. Like we're going to fix this, we're going to do that. Let me tell you something. A lot of politicians are liars. I'm just gonna be real. They are made to be that way, to feed you what they want, but also have a behind the scenes agenda to push to get a narrative pushed further. That's why when you see somebody rise up that's a, that's not quite fitting the narrative, they get so mad and they want to push against it because they can't push that narrative. You mm -hmm. see, and remember, the enemy's goal is to always to divide. Even though our nation has some very bad history, I mean, we can go back even to the Indians all the way on, right? Like we got some history. That, that is there that's not that great. But we, you know, the thing about me is I didn't live in those times. And they could be lied. We could have been lied to about a lot of stuff up to this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're even trying to, we see they're trying to erase parts of history now. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't go further in. They're taking down statues from 
certain eras and stuff. I mean, th- these things have been up, but this is how they do things. They get us manipulated, brainwashed to believe it, and then they take it out, you know? Mm. So we got to be very careful with listening to the mainstream thing because that's how that we get manipulated by voices other than the voice of the other than being able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we don't want our emotions to even be played on. I mean, why are they trying so hard to revive racism when we've been trying to push it away for so long? We've been mm-hmm. trying to bring proper unity. I mean, Martin Luther King, his whole thing was to come and bring unity, right? Mm-hmm. So like, why are they trying to even mess that up? Mm-hmm. Why? And politicians are behind a lot of this. Not the people, the politics. But see, that's why the prophetic, the real prophetic comes in and really corrects and pushes people in the direction we should go. Jesus wants us to be unified, every nation, every tongue, every tribe, everybody, and together, one heart, one mind, one spirit, all denominations, everything. That's Jesus' heart. This divisive thing of you owe me this, you owe me that. I mean, we come ask for forgiveness, but then there comes a time where we stand up, we move on, and we say enough's enough. We serve Jesus. He's our king. He wants unity. Because listen, when we go to heaven, all of this stuff we worry about down here is irrelevant. Mm. We're not taking these issues with us to heaven. They don't exist. There's no more tears. There's no more of that. So when I see these bickering and fusses about stuff that's going on in this world and what has happened and, you know, generations and stuff, I'm like, all right, we got to get over this, man. If we're going to truly unify, it has to be put behind us, you know? The white man with the black man with the Spanish man with the Asian man. We need to all come together and say, hey, we are one people under God, indivisible, in a nation that has that creed also. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's it, man. That's why I was saying in the beginning, I'm proud to be an American. And I want to challenge every prophet and prophetic person to use your voice for unity. The doom and gloom stuff is not what we need right now. Yes, we need to say, hey, if we don't do this, we need to repent. Yeah, I understand. But let's let's raise up and let's say, hey, guys, let's unify in this hour. Let's believe for the best. Let's really make what matters matter. Let's put put our differences aside. Let's bring the nation together right now. I mean, we just had an assassination attempt on the president, for goodness sake. We had the Secret Service woman today. She was, uh, this day, uh, the recording, She was she's resigned, right? Because people haven't been doing their job. People are being found out, and they have no choice because you can't hide behind the, the you know, you can't hide behind the curtain anymore. And that's why even we see Joe stepping away because he can't, he has nothing else to go. He wanted to, but he couldn't. He has nothing else. Even his own party saying, enough's enough, Joe. You know, so I'm interested to see how things move forward here in the future. Um, prophecy is needed. The prophetic is needed more than ever in this hour to speak forth the things that need to be spoken so that we can see even politics shift. Yes, God is involved in politics. Like Mark said, God is in the political realm. He is moving things. It's just he raises up kings. He takes down kings. So he's the one raising up people in power and pulling them down. Nobody is in power that the will of God is not involved in. Everybody that is in power, they're meant to be there. Even myself having influence like I do, God is meant for it to be there. I'm here for a purpose and for a time such as this. Many of your favorite people in the world are here for a time such as this to do something and to move something and to change something. So don't forget that. People gain influence because God wants them to. And the devil thinks he's giving people influence, but even those people he's given influence, God has his hand in that because he's going to do something to turn it around for his good. Do you see what I'm saying? God has always got a trump card. Amen? No puns intended, but you know what I'm saying. Actually, they were. So um, <laughs> if it's your first time watching this, guys, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, and share. And what do you think? Is there a place for the prophetic in politics? Should you be in there? I think so. What do you think? I want to hear your comment. Please go. I want to read your comments. Go down in that comment section, comment, and let's do community because I like to see what you guys think. But this has been episode 35 of That Supernatural Talk podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. But before I end this, I have somebody that needs to say some things. But before I do that, are we good, guys? Do you think we hit what we needed to hit? Do you have any prophetic word for this upcoming election, man of God? Do I have a prophetic word? Prophesy. I, I Prophesy. Don't ha- <laughs> I don't have anything 
that has really gotten real clear for me yet. Mm. I do think we're going to be surprised on the Democratic side, though. Oh, and who they select to represent? I think we're going to be very su surprised of the person that really steps in or the people that will start to step forward. Mm. I really think it's going to be interesting. I don't know at the time of this, I don't know if Kamala is who people want. Mm. I don't think that's who she, who they want. I think we're, I think there's something in the cards that we aren't seeing. Part of me wants to say something with Michelle. I just don't want to come stamp it yet because I'm, I'm not, you know, if I feel it by faith, I'll really say it. But I'm giving you guys an idea of where I'm where I'm rolling towards. I mean, I just Kamala does not have what it takes to to bring people together. She's got too much of a divide in her. There's too much division, you know. Um, some people say that they don't believe Joe will finish. He might pull it out. He might pull it out all the way. After I saw him get off that airplane, you know, he might pull it out. We'll see. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sitting here saying I have the prophetic direction. I really got to seek the Lord and then I'll release it in due time. Um, but I think we're going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see uh, who we have on the Democratic side. And also, I think they really need to make sure they have protection on Trump. I really, really do. And I think that, you know, all the political parties need to be speaking differently to make sure all candidates are protected. I even saw they gave RFK, RFK, Secret Service protection. Praise God, he deserves it. I mean, his uncle and his his and his dad got blasted, you know. So imagine him right. walking around. So, yeah, I That's think good. we'll be interested to see. I think it is going to be interesting to see what takes place here in the next few weeks. I really do. But anyway, guys, that's it for this uh, episode. I felt that this was a great topic to talk about considering the climate that we're in. Just to give you guys some insight on our hearts towards the prophetic and politics. And, you know, the next, the next episode is going to have some amazing things, too. So make sure you keep your eyes open for next week, too. But anyway, before we end, I want to pass it over to one of my sons in the faith. Evangelist Keeg's eyes. Take it away. Man, thank you guys for watching episode 35 of that Supernatural Talk podcast. Really quickly, I want to let you guys know what is going on with the Supernatural Life. If you don't know what the Supernatural Life is, it is a global ministry that is impacting millions and millions of people across the entire world. And I want you to be a part of it. Go to www.thesupernaturallife.org. Become a forerunner and become a part of what God is doing through Apostle Daniel Adams. You get access to join a local hub. You get access to so, so many exclusive Zoom calls, Prophetic Tuesday, Discipleship Thursday, Healing and Deliverance Zooms, and much, much more. So make sure you guys become a part of that. You guys get to join the family. You get to uh, be a part of fellowship with us when we go do revivals and evangelism and baptisms. It is an absolute blast. So make sure you guys do that there. Also too, we have upcoming revival tours. That is right. Australia, we are headed your way September 12th through the 14th in Melbourne, September uh, 17th through the 19th in Surface Paradise. And we're going to be in Kempsey in uh, September 21st to the 22nd. So if you're in Australia, make sure you guys come out. We even have exclusive merch too for that which you may be wondering what I'm even wearing right now. That's right. This is Supernatural merch. It is anointed, and let me tell you, you will not be disappointed. This merch is high quality. It is so, so good. That's right. Go to the Supernatural shop. It's now open. We got Prophetic Not Pathetic, Demon Sniper. We got uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1, Faith is the Substance of Things, Hope for the Evidence of Things Not Seen, Come on, somebody. We even have more. We have fire, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, Holy Spirit and fire, what I'm wearing right here. Let me tell you guys, this merch is amazing. You're going to want to get it. So make sure you guys go get some merch. If you guys are listening on uh, our other podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you guys can go to the links in the description below and you can join this channel. You can join that Supernatural Talk family. We do weekly behind the scenes episodes of things we would not talk about on here. They're so funny. 
They're so fried. Trust me, you're going to want to be a member of the podcast uh, on that supernatural talk. And also too, you can become a member through our hosted website provider, Buzzsprout. So you can go on Buzzsprout and you become, and you can become a monthly donor on there to help us continue to do this podcast. So that way more souls can be saved. Amen. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, smash that like button, like this video, share it to all your friends and family and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you can be notified of our weekly podcast episodes that come out every Tuesday at 7 PM Eastern time. That's it for episode 35 guys. We love you and we'll see you very, very soon for episode 36 of that supernatural talk.